Our topic today are um, Lewis diagrams. So we are going to begin our study of covalent bonding. And uh, Lewis diagrams, meaning Lewis symbols and Lewis structures, um, allow us to make predictions about covalently bonded compounds, also known as molecules. All right, so Lewis, to begin with, let's do this easy. Um, so a Lewis dot symbol helps us keep track of valence electrons that are available for bonding. Now, in AP chemistry, we're really not going to do a lot with Lewis symbols. I'm still going to show you how to construct a Lewis symbol, but we really um, are going to use Lewis structures more than a simple Lewis symbol. But let's go ahead and, um, and make a Lewis symbol for nitrogen. So nitrogen N. And so what we're going to do with this is we are going to represent the valence electrons in nitrogen by dots. Okay, so that's why it's called a dot symbol. So the dots are representing the valence electrons in nitrogen. Um, how many valence electrons does nitrogen have? If you refer to your periodic table, we know that nitrogen is in group 5, and so that means that nitrogen has 5 valence electrons. So we assign the dots that represent the electrons in a methodical way. So what we do is we go around one time before we pair them up. So we go like this, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that is the Lewis symbol for the nitrogen atom. The dots representing its five valence electrons. So, um, this pair has its own special name. So this pair, we call that a lone pair of electrons. And these three here, let's do it in a different color, uh, these three here, one, two, three, these are unpaired electrons. And we say then that these three unpaired electrons are available for bonding. Available for bonding. So they are available to be shared with another atom to, um, to form a covalent bond. We say that the lone pairs are unavailable. They're unavailable for bonding. Okay, so Lewis symbol. Now we're never going to draw all these things around the dots. It's just simply the dots. Okay, so nitrogen has got a single lone pair, and then it's got three unpaired electrons that are available for bonding. Now let's make things a lot more complicated. So then we move on to Lewis structures. And the Lewis structure of a molecule shows how the valence electrons are arranged among the atoms in a molecule. And we have rules for creating a Lewis structure, or guidelines for creating a Lewis structure. And in the beginning, creating Lewis structures um, aren't easy, but you're going to get really, really good at it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to sum up all the valence electrons 
from all of the atoms that are in the molecule. Okay, and we're going to account for all of the valence electrons that are in the molecule. Uh, we're going to then use a pair of electrons to form a bond between each pair of bound atoms. Okay, so remember, we are representing covalent bonding here. We make Lewis structures only for covalently bonded molecules, showing how the electrons are being shared. They don't get shared in ionic bonding. All right, and then last but not least, arrange the remaining electrons to satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for others, for everything else. Okay, so hydrogen only needs, its, its valence is the 1s orbital, quantum level 1, the s orbital, so it only needs two electrons in order to have a complete duet. Everything else needs eight electrons to form a full octet and to be stable, which is the point of bonding. Okay, so let's do a few of these. I'm going to show you how to do a couple of them, and then we'll just practice it in class tomorrow. All right, so let's start with hydrogen. Hydrogen gas, H2. Okay, so the first thing we need to do then is we need to count up the total amount of valence electrons in this thing. Well, we've got two, and hydrogen each has one valence electron, so we have a total of two electrons. Okay, and what we will do then is we'll put an H, and we'll put an H. We um, are going to put a pair of dots to represent the bonded pair. So one, two, and then what we do is we fill in any more electrons we might have in our total to satisfy either the duet or the octet. Um, but in this case, we're good. Our two electrons are shown. This hydrogen has one, two electrons. This hydrogen, one, two electrons, because we always include the electrons that they're sharing. Um, and so we're done. There is the Lewis structure for hydrogen gas. You also see the, you can also see bonded pairs being then represented by a line. And we say, well, this line represents a single bonded pair, so two pairs of electrons. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next one we're going to do is methane, CH4. All right, so carbon has four valence electrons, and each of the hydrogens has one valence electron, and we've got four of them, so that's going to be four. So our total then that we have to account for is eight electrons. Okay, so then we're going to start the first atom, we assume is the central atom. So we're going to put in a carbon, and then the next job we need to do is we need to uh, put in bonded pair for each, um, for each uh, pair of atoms that are bound together. So we'll say hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Okay, so we've done step two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to count up the electrons we've got in here. So we've got two, four, six, eight. Great. We have accounted for all of the valence electrons. So we're done with this thing. But to make sure, let's make sure that the hydrogen is following duet and carbon is following octet. So this hydrogen, two electrons. This hydrogen, two electrons. This hydrogen, two electrons. This hydrogen, two electrons. Carbon, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so keep in mind, you guys, that when two atoms are sharing a pair of electrons, 
one of the electrons from the pair is one of carbon's valence electrons, and one of the electrons in the pair is hydrogen's valence electron. Okay, and we can also write this with lines now, which would look like that. All right, let's do another one. Let's do nitrogen trifluoride, NF3. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Each fluorine has seven valence electrons, and there's three fluorines. So seven times three is 21. So that means we have a total of 26 electrons we have to account for in this Lewis structure. So, first atom is our central atom, so we're going to put in the nitrogen, and I am going to um, put in bonded pairs for each of the fluorines. So, let's go fluorine, fluorine, fluorine. Now, I've only got six electrons in there. Um, so first of all, let's look at nitrogen. Is it following octet? No, it's only got two, four, six. So we need to put a lone pair on the nitrogen. Now it's got two, four, six, eight. Each of the fluorines need to follow octet as well. So they're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty two, twenty four, twenty six electrons. We are good to go. This is a valid Lewis structure. If we were going to draw it with lines, tedious, but this is how it would be. It would be nitrogen. Fluorine to fluorine to fluorine, but by definition, you guys, we've got to we've got to have all of our valence electrons in the structure. So yes, we have substituted lines for our bonded pairs, but we need to put in all of our lone pairs as well. So nitrogen's got a lone pair, and each of the fluorines have three lone pairs. All right, so this is what the Lewis structure in either of these, you guys, either one of those is valid. Okay, let's do the last one, which is a little bit uh, confusing. So we're going to do nitrogen gas, N2. Okay, so for N2, hi, it's okay. I have a question. All right, so let's count up the valence electrons for nitrogen. We've got two nitrogens, and each nitrogen has five valence electrons. So five times two is 10. So we have got to arrange 10 electrons around these two atoms where both atoms satisfy, have the octet satisfied. So if I go nitrogen, nitrogen. Okay, so I put in my bonded pair. Now, let's just go ahead and fill in like normal. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so both nitrogens now have 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. How many total electrons do we have? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Way too many. We've only got 10 electrons to account for. Okay, so now what we're going to do? What are we going to do? Well, there aren't simply single bonds in covalent bonding. There's also double bonds where a pair of atoms will share two pairs of electrons. So let's put a double bond in and see what happens. So that's wrong. So let's go in and then we'll say one, two, 
Okay, so instead of just one bonded pair, let's go two bonded pairs. And then we'd have to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because that way it would be two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. All right, let's count it up. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oh, that does not match ten. Can they have a triple bond? Well, yes, they can. So, pairs of atoms can actually share three pairs of electrons, and that is the situation for nitrogen. So, uh, we will say then, N, one, two, three. And then let's put a lone pair here, and a lone pair here, and let's see, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, excellent, octets followed, two, four, six, eight, ten, we match the valence electrons. So, nitrogen gas actually is triple bonded. So, if we we're going to use lines to show the bonded pairs, it would be N, one, two, three, N, and then, of course, we cannot leave out our lone pairs. They are important. All right, we'll practice tomorrow.